And what's happened is, is you guys have decided I am Ruth 2.0. I, I, I do, Ruth, I do I, not I agree with that. I have to go talk to Viv. You're welcome to come, uh, come join us. Sure, I don't care. <laughs> you don't have to, but you can. All right. Okay. I'll just ask her since since you're on the fence about it. No, I don't. Hey, yeah, I don't care either way. Do you want me here or no, or do you care? I can't really say that. Cornwood's obviously bought you for a reason, so you might as well stay. Well, I mean, I I don't care either way. Listen, I'm aware that people won't meet with me solo. I'm gonna start this conversation. It's gonna sound terrible, Beric, but uh, you know, this conversation is supposed to be squashing beef and shit. So yeah, I feel like you and Denzel have no f balls whatsoever. Wait, me? Wait, how me? Uh, why have you got Barrick here? Why did you bring Barrick up? Well, because I was already with him. So I told him he doesn't have right. to be here if you don't want to. We just need to have this conversation. I'm under no impression things are going to get fixed today, but... uh. Well, no, I mean, I think, I think they are. Because here's here's what I'm under the impression of. Duncan will speak... I was, I'm going around doing meetings with people. What can we do for PD liaison shit? Duncan's conversation kind of devolved into what's wrong with everybody. Whereas... For me, I was talking about, you know, policing the police. My frustration being we are weak in patrol. My frustration being that we have who I see as one of our best officers and you being stuck dealing with bullshit all day that you should not be dealing with. I pulled up your incidents and I told him, I said, what, like, look at what Viv has done in the last month. She, she ain't even able to go out there and do shit because she keeps having to deal with dumb bullshit that she probably don't even want to deal with. So I was out of town for a while. I want to talk to you about this last week, but I didn't get a chance to. I actually brought it up. I was like, thank God Viv's out on patrol because you know, you're out, you're out there getting shit done. And when we don't have good officers out there patrolling on the streets and getting shit done, then you end up having just, just more, just stupid bullshit that we shouldn't have to, shouldn't have to deal with. Okay. So let me, let me try and uh, talk about it from my perspective. My job as a command member is to ensure that patrol runs as smoothly as possible, right? With as little problems as possible. Right. Now, I can be out there in the field leading scenes and stuff like that, but that's more of a senior role, right? Well, sure, that, that as well. Command oversee the, the senior side of it. The reason why you won't find many incidents, et cetera, et cetera, under my name specifically is because I... I do not take primary on most scenes. I am a support cop, okay? With it's... me being stuck inside, dealing with issues, there is a reason for that, okay? It's not like I find issues to just stick around and handle. I was putting fires out by trying to like investigate these things that were being brought to me, by the way. But the thing is, is people don't like the fact that not everybody's been spoken to first. So then it involves speaking to people. Then we got seniors in. So if you're on about the past month, we've had more seniors brought in within the past month. Before, we had hardly any around. It did it did fall to like myself and Anita doing the main legwork in that. The specific week though, where you brought up the uh, incidents, by the way, and this is this is the most hurtful part to me, is the same week that we had that mass academy. No, 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 hold on. I didn't bring so up a week. Over... No, no, I didn't bring no, no, up no, a week. No, 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 you brought it up the same week. You brought it up the same week. From my POV, like mm. from what Duncan said to me, it sounded like you were picking up on the fact that I've not put anything no. out there. No, Duncan, du okay, Duncan has been doing this shit where he's just trying to stir and, b and being annoying. That's, that's just what I it mean, is. So, so is everybody else, Conwood. No, no, this is different. Because cause it's, it, it, he's intentionally misconstruing what I see it. Because I, I looked at it over the course of, I think, six weeks, not one week. I was told it's within regards to the quotes of points. No, week. no. See, he's just saying shit. It's not about quota points. Duncan just says shit sometimes. It, it was over the course of six weeks. And uh, it wasn't even incidents that you made. It was specifically incidents that you were a part of, right? As like officers involved. That's how I looked it up in the MDT. And what I was saying is I wish Viv is out on patrol more instead of having to deal with all this bullshit. And, and we need to find ways to not, like we need to cut the shit so that we, because we don't have enough officers. Like if we had like 30 officers out there, then we could have more people dealing with more shit. But we don't. So then people are out there and they feel like they don't have backup and then patrol is weak like we have we have people out there right now that are I, i'm just going to be honest and this is very mean and i'm just gonna say it they are bad we do have some officers that are not very good that don't mean they can't get better but there's there's like a degree of negligence that is regularly shown like negligence in their police work they're not being held accountable by their actions right not as far as like oh we talk about accountability and shit but like you need to be held accountable in your police work just as much as everything else we talk about there's pro and cons of how things were five months ago. I think how
how things were five months ago are not product of the quality of officer that we had out there. The average quality of officer has gone down and our patrol has gotten weaker recently. I had a headache earlier and I found out while I have a headache, like five minutes later, you know, Voss gets his damn car stolen. I mean, just completely negligent. And when we had the skeleton crew and we had, you know, the early hires, technically I was an early hire, things were pretty damn good. Like we, we as far as I, I didn't have to watch over my shoulder all the damn time. That's where my frustration comes from. So I don't know what Duncan told you, but to me, it sounds like it was a hell of a lot worse than what I said or what my intentions were, which is kind of par for the course. I'm aware that the standard of policing has gone down. Without going into too much detail, I recently dapped somebody because of a similar incident with situational awareness. Okay, well that's good. Is it though? Because that is the very incident that got complained about to the mayor. Were they taught they something? They tried to make an arrest. They tried to make an arrest in Orchardville of all places by themselves with their back up on Capitol Boulevard. Well, this is the Denzel situation. Yes. Why is that different to the situational awareness with Jack? Denzel's wasn't negligent. I heard Denzel calls for 77s. He sees that he's got 77s coming. He hears it. Then he sees that they're they're right there. He either makes a move or lets it go. He decides to make a move. He sees that he has backup. He takes a risk and I don't even remember what happened. The suspect pulled a knife out, which caused Denzel to shout 78s which then meant that he had to produce his firearm or had to open fire, sorry, at, toward the suspect. Suspect got into a car which came to pick them up. So Denzel obviously opened fire on the, on the car, which is, you know, you're supposed to do so after warning the driver, which he said he did. He shot the driver down, but the suspect who pulled a knife on him still managed to get away. Do you want to know my argument as to why it's negligent? Yeah, why is that? Why couldn't he have waited five to 10 seconds for the backup to arrive? Well, I thought the guy started getting away. Denzel basically said to me, the vehicle that was with that person left so therefore that person had no means of getting away I, I understand what he was saying now when he said he had to make a move if that guy left then he probably saw it as hey i have a window of time here where i can actually press this guy and and go for the arrest so he wanted to do it before the guy came back around and picked him up i mean i i, I see why he did it i think he just made a judgment call and didn't work out if he doesn't get a chance to make an arrest is that worth him potentially being attacked if you're a normal person no if you're a police officer and it's just part of your job, I mean, it's either do you want to sit on your ass all day and, and wait or do you want to do you want to go for it when you take those risks? They need to be done in such a way that are not making a negative impact on those around you. I, I, I don't disagree with Denzel going in on that, but I do think this if Denzel shot at the driver, I think he, he should not have done that. He should not have been shooting at the driver once they got in. He needs to learn. Like, he needs to understand that. And I think that's what it comes down to. And this is the same thing I told Duncan. I think when it comes to learning and teaching and whatnot, I think you're one of the best damn teachers we got. I do I do believe that. And I told Duncan, did Duncan tell you that? Or no, do you just try and make everything sound as bad as possible? No, he didn't. No, he didn't make everything sound as bad as possible. No. Okay. But did he say that part or no? I honestly, I don't remember most of the conversation. It was quite a while ago now. Okay, I remember well. the, the key points that stick out to me, just like everybody else, are the bad ones, you know? Yeah, it's, that's a, it's it's human, human nature. nature. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I did tell Duncan this. I said, I don't want you to go talk to Viv about this because if I have this, I want to have this conversation directly with Viv and I don't want it to be misconstrued by the game of telephone, which happens non-stop and he did, he did actually tell me you wanted to talk to me okay well at least he did that but i but i wish he wouldn't have come and end up making everything i was saying sound like it was in a bad light because i don't think that's fair to you one it ain't fair to me because then that makes me look like i'm doing some bullshit about you it ain't fair to you because it makes you feel a certain type of way that ain't justified i get that you know what you said wasn't like supposed to be like a bad thing but what made it into a bad thing is that was also teamed with me being informed that at the shift three meeting the mayor turned up and said why is shift one commands targeting denzel so yeah. somebody i don't know about the that. only people i know to be complaining about things are denzel and then obviously hearing from duncan about the policing the police situation is you I, I actually haven't talked to the mayor about denzel at all i think ever i do think denzel has a microscope over him it's unfair i think you're also forgetting cornwood that denzel came back with specific stipulations the main thing for denzel was the attitude part. I know that he can do his job, right? And I spoke with Beric about this when Beric said, how would you feel about him coming back and I want you to be his mentor sort of thing. I specifically said I was looking for his attitude change. And what's happened is, is you guys have decided I am Ruth 2.0. Now I get that you guys didn't like Ruth. I, I, I do, Ruth. I do I, not you know, agree with that at all well, in the slightest, but go ahead. I'm getting the same fucking treatment that she got. I feel very much at this time 
that my job is in the fucking balance because all it's going to take is the Ma uh, Mayor Max coming in and going, fire Viv. And not one person is going to stop that. I would. Not one, no. Not I would, one person I, is going to stop I, that. I'd put my hand on the Bible and I'd say that. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to happen. I'm being very honest when I say this. I absolutely would not agree. So then why are people complaining to the mayor? And why is the mayor making passive aggressive comments about shift one command? I mean, it's a terrible situation. You guys practically inherited like just as rough a, of, a de of a debt during that time as I did. In terms of the people before you did so much damage that you have to try and make up for all of it. Right. And it's, it's nearly impossible because he still feels the same way about that time because he never sees it or sees anything about it he just hears like whispers through the grapevine this person said this that person said that and he just thinks it's more the same as it used to be when in reality it's not there there is like a line and i use this analogy with barrick you got a boat with some holes in it and these holes in the boat they're a bunch of different sizes if you have a if you try and plug a hole with with a plug that's too small it ain't gonna work it's gonna keep leaking if you try and plug the hole with a plug that's too big then it, it's not gonna work at all Right, it's not even gonna get in there. It's gonna cause more problems, maybe. You have to find the right plug to fill the right hole in order to keep the boat afloat. So we have to find a, a middle ground. There's a line between getting somebody in trouble for something and then having it be a teaching moment. That's the scale. On one end is all teaching, on another end is all punishment. There is something in the middle there and it has to be administered to someone on a case by case basis based on how they learn and how they respond to criticism. That's the way it needs to be treated. And it is very, very hard. It, it is like a major, major your point of coaching or just any sort of teaching right we have a looked into why there are holes in the boat though well there's a lot of reasons for holes in the boat the wood we use ain't great the water is bad i mean it's like corrosive water i mean shit okay. the way we're handling the boat is a disaster in the first place i mean the wear and tear yeah. on so this I'm, thing is I'm rough gonna i mean take your analogy uh -huh. and i'm gonna i'm gonna switch it up a little bit so trying to find a, the right plug for the hole yeah that's that's great and all but it's only going to be a temporary measure right so ultimately Sorry, I just I, this always happen. Well, you're me. smoking is bad. Fly. Smoking is bad for you. Okay, I didn't want you smoking because it's bad for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, going back to the analogy though, like isn't my job like one of my jobs, not my whole job, same as other people in command and high command? Isn't their responsibility to look at why there are holes appearing in the boat and to try to stop that, potentially get it grounded so that the whole boat can be fucking repaired, whatever uh -huh. the hell, rather than just trying to plug up the holes with a temporary fix? Well, that plug don't got to be temporary is, is the way I see it. Because if, if you have the plug that's just right, you, you patch that thing up, you know. There, there are some cases where you just gotta rebuild the boat. There are some cases where you gotta, where you gotta swap out a plank. You gotta do some of that, but that should be rare. And I mean, the wood's gotta be real, real bad for that to happen. Maybe I'm a little bit more lenient for whatever reason. I think that there's a lot of cases that you can, you can patch something up and you can make it last for the long haul rather than trying to get a whole new plank altogether. Every, every action of applying daps to someone is purely a log of hey this major error was made but it was rectified this person's not going to do it going forward now if we find on someone that there are multiple dots for the same situation i think it's fair to say that that person is not learning that you just hit the nail on the head that that is the the core of what i'm talking about we have to find the right size plug otherwise they're not going to learn you have to approach a situation in which you're adapting somebody for properly. Otherwise, they're just going to be punished for it as opposed to taking that situation and having learned from it. You and I see the same issue. It's just, we gotta find a solution. I'm, I'm not in a position to find a solution, but that, that's how I feel. I feel like as a, as a department, we need to find a solution.